This is Michael. We're going to go back and continue bleeding our rear brake that we actually left out on. Just to recap of what the tools we need. A couple of sheets of paper cloth, disposable, an empty bottle of water or whatever. If you have a little bit of water, that's fine. We're not really using it to put anything back in. We're just having it to actually draw back out. Uh, razor blade to cut a little slit open because you're going to put, if you can't get a pit posse a tool like these are optional. Brake cleaner is optional if you want to clean your brakes afterward. But the one that's you need for sure is an 8 millimeter or 516 socket to be able to breed, break the beating of the uh, banjo um, brake bleeder bolt here. And then make sure it's open in a ranch like this, 516, or they call it 8 millimeter. And then you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver to break your master cylinder cap, or if it's a flathead or Allen wrench, just make sure you know which one's appropriately so you be able to take that off. And this was for our front and our rear one is on our left hand side so we'll be breaking this off you can see how it looks like when it's completely drained out we cleaned it emptied it out already you saw my other video this one's actually completely full so it's still nice and clear that's what you want you want it to be clear like this this one's empty that's why it's really clear there's not even a little bit one drop right there so we're going to break this out with the phillips and we're going to continue where we left off i just want to care with you last time remember our our Hoka Dragon uh, brake line uh, kind of uh, manufactured leaked on us right here in this cap area. So what we did was we put some JD weld and hopefully that will fix the problem. You can see here I didn't do the most prettiest job but it's definitely doable. You just you can smooth it out further with a sandpaper after you JB weld it. It's not going to go well on anything kind of rubber or plastic. Uh, but these are aluminum and this one's metal. You can see here I kind of sand it with a grinder. Um, or just yeah pretty much a what do you call that? One of those things you can sand metal with. I can't get it off the top of my head. But you can use a finer sandpaper because you don't want to put too much uh, bruise on this. You don't want it to oxidize and rust metal. So you can see here it's nicely covered. It wasn't leaking on top anymore like it used to because we put a little Viton, um, sort of a donut rubber inside of it. And when the this banjo bolt compressed it in there, it sealed that from leaking on top of the thread area and usually come back out from the throb. So the only thing it was, it was still leaking from here. So we're gonna find out for right now if the JB weld actually held up to it. It's been probably sitting here since, uh, I would say New Year's uh, Eve probably. So it's been a good two weeks for it to have time to cure this long. It only takes 24 hours. But we just haven't had time to come back and do our brake bleeding. Now before we tune in our carburetor, I want to check our brakes because we actually have to uh, give it a test run for about a good 10 to 15 minutes, warm up the carburetor, and then hit the kill switch. And then we can uh, pretty much tune it to see what's going on, uh, what's it doing in idle speed and what's it doing in the high main jet speed. So here we go, now we're going to get started. So this is it, we're going to go ahead and prepare. What you're going to need is a couple of basic things like I said. A bottle to catch it in, a tube, and also a piece of cloth. This piece of cloth here, we're going to prepare it. We're going to take our cap off. So let me go ahead and do that right now. We're going to put that on here like this. And optional, you can get a pair of gloves, uh, some rubber gloves. If you're doing the rear brakes, it's a little bit harder because you have to extend your arm or if you can have someone to help you. But I like to take a clean piece of sheet right here to protect all your surrounding if you really want to get more protected get some like you know piece of cloth or you know to protect your gauge cluster and stuff like that or anything you have you can see here I have nothing on the bottom because um, this is still a naked bike so just take a little rip and there you go now it's got a little bib on there uh, the only thing I have is my ram melt ram mount and um, some of my, you know, that's just pretty much the handlebar, so it's pretty clean. I'm going to have to tilt it this way. You try want to get it level if you can, though, if someone's helping you, go for it, go for level. But if you can't, you're going to have to turn it a little bit more inward because you need to be able to reach fast your um, your rear uh, brake bleeder bungee bolt when you have to close it in. You're going to squeeze the brakes as you're doing this, so I'm going to go ahead and preset it right now to where it needs to be. Here we go. Let me get the camera right. probably won't be in this position too long but that way you can see where the bleeding brake needs to be okay we have a neighbor's dog just coming in our yard it's making friends with our dog so uh, it's, it's a pretty beautiful dog here we go he, but he's not gonna be much help on the brake bleeding part so here we go we're gonna go ahead and get started take our Phillips 
again if you have trouble driving these out and you probably will because everything on the Chinese scooter they're made to almost fall apart on you if you don't replace it with some good Taiwanese parts or some good um, quality brand part it so here we go you want to maybe take a mallet hammer and just tap on it drive those uh, Phillips in a little bit more if you have a Phillips uh, screw in there and then you know twist it off because if you can't, you're going to have to keep on trying to make a groove in there and breaking that. Now, these are pretty loose and already. It's not going to come that easy for you. I remember I had to hammer. I almost thought this whole thing was going to break off. But it can take a good hammer still to it. Not hammer it directly, but hammer where you need to get the bolts. There you go. And you remember how I actually soaked these on some rust remover? Turn it from a chrome plated to a nice... Um, this is the only one that turned out great is the gun metal. And I kind of like it because everyone who buys those NCY caps are usually they get the silver chrome one but like I said again get some of that little um that uh gel like rust remover there let's set for 24 hours no longer and you're gonna see it's just gonna turn into a beautiful um a gunmetal gray even the the bleeding bolt that we soaked in with it which was rust that one did just good on the bleeding bolt because so there we go you're gonna have two uh two more layers after the cap the aluminum cap you're gonna have a plastic one I'm just going to put this to the side here so you can see it. And then you're going to have a little rubber, sort of like a rubber boot that kind of aligns with the, the shape of the plastic one as well. So there you go. There it goes inside there. Your screws might be perfectly parallel. You can see mine's diagonal. <coughs> so we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Here we go. We got our screws here. You can see the inside of my, um, maybe you can and maybe you can't, but let me go and take this off so you can see it. You can see the inside of it right now. It's pretty clean. It could be a little bit more cleaner. Again, with uh, brake fluid, you want to make sure you use a fresh bottle every time. You're not going to actually always, um, you know, need to store up on brake fluid. So buy just enough. I would think this one right here is enough to do both cylinders for your scooter. Or even for your motorcycle. I mean, even with the amount of bleeding that you're going to do, you're going to actually, what you're doing is bleeding is drawing the air and any moisture is coming out of these calipers here. So she, uh, you got the disc calipers and they're going to be bleeding out. You'll see all the gunk and stuff coming out from the hose and the air as well. You want to maybe be able to retighten and tighten it just like you would if you do any kind of car when you push on the brake. If it falls loose, more than likely it's been exposed to air and it's really not catching the fluid. You just want solid fluid through your lines into your brake caliper behind it where it pushes on those brake pads you can see here i got some blue ncy brake pads they're really nice um so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and set these down see here i got cardboard ready this time i got a little bit more prep time okay and we're gonna go ahead and get the plastic one as well oh the plastic one is already on there sorry but yeah i'll keep it on here keep my bolts here We'll take a little bit of a piece of this uh, rag again as a backup, uh, just in case we need to wipe our hands. You can use gloves if it makes it a little bit less messy for you, because um, brake fluid and everything else is very harsh on everything's skin. You'll probably even use your, your fingerprints, probably won't even actually be recognizing your um, uh, phone anymore with brake fluid. So here we go. So we're just going to stuff this in, clean out the rest of it. Again, we're going to inspect this JB well to see if it actually can hold. So the minute I pour it in right now, we're going to see what's going to happen. If we see a sign of drizzle, we're going to go and replace this whole uh, rear brake line, which I can care less to do so because then I have to restrap everything. You can see here, everything's nicely tucked. You can see there it comes from the loop. Oh, by the way, I want to show you too. I also uh, added this on here because I didn't want my plastic... Or even my brake line to keep rubbing on the housing here because it gets pretty sharp you know these little plastic edges so you can buy a little bit of these wire protectors and just put them in there you know we went a little bit more we protected some of the exposed wires from our LED lights here which we're gonna cut this tie strap soon because I believe it's done siliconing that's also been about two weeks and I had a little bit extra left I put it toward this end right here so it doesn't expose the wires too much even though this side exposes it a little bit but it's covered looks pretty cool still the color you know you got not no red white and blue but black red and blue but this one's tightly skewered there we're gonna cut this off I mean the silicone should do its job and seal this already so you can see here the brake line follows from that 
left handlebar right there where the banjo bolt is. It goes down and we're not actually going to be using this ugly thing for too long. We're going to get put back his rubber boots, which the rubber boots is right here. This cloth here is going to indicate that there's a drip that we missed and we can see because it's a very clear still brake fluid when it's still fresh. And we're going to see if we can catch any before it drips through the line and makes a further mess down here. But we're going to actually be using the boot that comes with it. See, you got a little boot here. So it's going to look nice and clean just like this finished one here. It has no problem, no leaks whatsoever. But we're also going to add another Dragon boot that's coming right behind and covering the, this plastic part. You can see what we did here. We put JB Weld on it. We only put JB Weld on the hard plastic area, but it's not going to really secure from the... Um, the flexible one but we didn't not sure we had a leak there we, we for sure we know we had a leak here before we had a leak on top as well because it spurred out through the threads and came out down this way we thought that was the leak only but it turned out that this one also leaked on the bottom end of this one's right here so we're going to try to get that see if uh, that will actually be resolved so I'm just getting any debris or anything out right now there's air exposed to it already but that's the purpose of doing this so we can get all the air out. You're going to keep on having to re-tap it, fill it in from time to time. If you don't have someone to help you, you can get a strong rubber band. Make sure you do get a rubber band that clenches more because the minute you actually open that brake bleeder um, bon bonjo bolt there that we're going to do, you're going to see that it's going to loosen up the tension and it's going to go in and further your uh, brake lever. So you definitely want to make sure you have this ready. I wouldn't put it on the closed side. This ranch, unfortunately, doesn't teeter tot. I wish it did. It actually goes one way and retracts it. You have to flip it the other way for you to be able to use it the other way. And that's just too much more work. So all I want to do is just keep this in the open area. That way I can swing it. It's only going to take about a 90 degree swing. You can swing it right or left. Right or left, right there. So just a 90 degree swing would do the job. So here we go. We're going to get started. We're going to pour, and when we pour, we'll be able to find out. But make sure this is closed up first. You don't want any exposed and everything. And then we're going to go ahead and start making a slit there and tighten um, our hose line into our little empty bottle container there. And I'll show you a little trick there I just found out myself. Is you want to actually keep a little, um, one of these little, well, if you buy the Hoka one, it comes with two of these little clamps that has little sharp edges. These sharp edges actually work great for hooks. So it doesn't keep the bottle moving around or having the hose come back out. So once you put the hose in there, let's make a slow slit right now. And I'm pushing it, a little air there helps bring it to the surface. Okay, there it goes. So I made the slit, dipped my hose in there. All the air is coming out. It's gonna be hard to do it with one hand. There we go. So once you get in there, it's kind of like fish itself in there, you know? So let me see if I can do it one hand still for you. See? It's a little damaging now. That's okay. Just want to get it jabbed in there. As long as it's not cracked anywhere else open, you're good. There we go. And that's it. Now I could blow on it a little bit, give it a little bit more form. Let's see if I can still blow on with the air on this side. So here we go. There we go. Give it a little bit more form and shape. Okay, definitely you want to reuse the cap because the cap can help you. Okay. You want brake fluid to flow in. You can see how it makes it like a hanger. So you can actually hang this up. So we can attach it right now since we're back here. But it wouldn't matter right now. Uh, the brake's not going to come pouring out until you actually break it, which is going to be counterclockwise, clockwise to retighten it up. You can see here it's just enough for us to actually, um, let's see, we can move this out of the way, the cap of it. Okay, you're going to need like a good small hose. I believe maybe 3 16 or so. Uh, something smaller than your normal fuel line hose, more like your vacuum line hose, the, the little smaller ones. So here we go, we're gonna force it in there. You, you wanna snug in there because you don't want a loose one. You want a loose one, it might create air pressure back out and you might have to get everything done. So give it a good push. I jab it from one corner first. There it is, see it's coming in. You can see how I kind of jab it, it's going to probably pop, come up back out yet. Not all the way in yet, so. <clears throat> there we go. Just kind of walk it in there. Nice. All right, the reason why you want to open one is you can't just slide this back in, slide the other way to be able to reverse it. So it's better to have a little open one. If this becomes too loose, 
You can also get a little piece of paper, you know, old little rag, like this one, kind of bunch it up. You know, you don't want it double two layer thick, but you can still get it good, pretty good thick. You can just leave it in there and just go like that. You can feel it still. You can get your socket in there. Let's see if I can get my socket in there. Yeah, this look like it's going this way. There we go. That will give you a little bit more snugger hold of your, once the oil gets in and gets messy, it's going to, you know, cause a little slipperage here on your ranch. So you could just use a little piece of paper there to hold in place while you continue on. But uh, again, we're not going to, well, we're not going to open it again until we built pressure. And I believe there is some pressure from the last uh, brake fluid that we did put in there. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get our brake fluid out. I got this cracked open already, but you want to use a fresh one all time. Here we go. I'm using, um, I can consult with your user manual, even though it says here, you know, recommend dot, you know, it recommend right here. It says uh, dot three or dot four fluid. I went with dot three because that's what it says on my user manual. So check with your user manual uh, if the brake uh, caliper setup came with the bike originally. That will give you the best uh, rating of what it expects for your bike's tolerance and heat. Okay, so I'm going to pour it in. And we're going to fill it always as much as we can. This is no problem. Because it's going to be a lot more draining involved. We're going to keep pouring it for a few more times. So, go and get a good resolution there for you. Brake fluid seems to be easy to pour compared to um, motor oil. There we go. All right, let's go and watch it. As we're, this one doesn't spurt out, so we don't have to worry too much. Okay, we just want to watch the line here. And tuck in the bib a little bit here. Not too worried about it. You can see here, it's pretty much a naked bike. I don't have any kind of plastic shell or anything, but it still hurts your metal. So we're gonna monitor it, okay? I'm gonna hit the brake lever, build some pressure. Now before I build pressure, I'm gonna need something to actually hold this uh, pretty much in. So let me go ahead and grab something um, like a rubber. There we go. And use a piece of glove. Probably, you know, it works like a rubber band. This might work well. It might be too loose. So we'll see. Maybe we can go in the foot in the four fingers or something. Okay. Because we're doing this by ourselves, so we want to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to pump it, and we're going to monitor it and see if it's actually coming out. In fact, we can level it here now because I angle it that way so you, I can show you. You can see how good of a clear brake fluid should be like. And this is what we expect to see on the other end as well with no bubbles. Well, hardly any bubbles. Okay, let's go ahead and monitor. I'm going to give it a squeeze. You can see when I squeeze it. You're going to go ahead and just squeeze it until you don't see any bub bubbles protruding on this top end right here. Because there's going to be a lot of bubble because it's still filling all the empty hose line. Especially if you change to a brand new hose line and there's no fluid for the first time. A lot of people do what's called reverse um, brake bleeding where they actually introduce fluid from the opposite side and coming in this way back and they have some a hydraulic pump or anything like that which is great if you have those kind of tools available you know it'll definitely probably give you a little bit better on uh, no air but i think this will work just fine with what we have so you can see here a lot of air is introduced in fact it's already going down by itself and we haven't even breaking the the other end brake fluid yet to actually what is it doing is siphoning the air from existing what's in the hose right now to i'm feeling this as i go so far my finger feels dry. You can see here, you can see my fingerprints. This is great. Nothing. It's awesome. Okay, we'll keep going. We won't get our hopes up yet, but we do have a backup uh, brake line. It's about 240 centimeters uh, longer. 250 centimeters longer compared to 110 centimeters for the front brake line. So we have that as a backup just in case. Now, you don't want it to actually keep pumping it until it goes all the way to the very bottom end because you, then you're introducing the top air from getting back into the line. So as soon as it gets low, I wouldn't wait anymore, especially if you get caught up in other things and you keep pumping and pumping it. As a safety, once it falls halfway below that zero, that little, I'm sorry, that round window mark, just so start filling it and tapping it again. See, I'm pumping it right now just to make sure that it all... Let's see if I come this way, you can see it a little bit better, or... There we go. 
see the brake line right there see it's halfway now so again my my safety tells me is well before I put it let me feel this again make sure that brake fluid brake fluid is harsh I mean you can eat through anything but let's see if JB well which is can be tolerable to a lot of things can actually handle brake fluid I'm not worried about this side right here I don't think it actually leaked from here ever but you can see I still filed it anyway. I put some JB Weld in, in anyway, even though I know the flex team might not even hold it. I'm thinking whatever in the crisis is, maybe there's a crack in the aluminum. We'll fill that in with JB Weld. But this is the one that I'm more concerned about right here, this side. Because I know there was a leak before, if you remembered. Let's see if I can yeah. There we go. Let's go and inspect it. Yeah, it's one ugly JB Weld job. It's not like the one I did in my um, rear crankcase I don't know how I got lucky in that one I usually JB well doesn't really sit that pretty it's like a gray ugly tar looking try and get this other shot here for you see on the other side see there still pretty dry huh yeah we'll keep an eye on that one because I don't want to waste brake fluid and find out it's leaking I'm still pumping it in there you know there's no point once that leaks that means it's exposing air anyway So here we go, we're doing good. Oh boy, it starts shooting up now. Okay, because it's getting too low. Yeah, see that what happens there? You do, if you're gonna do this on your certain bikes too, by the way, if you don't know if your bike will actually create a little spurt or not, go ahead and, I wouldn't put the rubber one yet. I would, yeah, I would, I would put the, I would go ahead and just put the rubber one on. In fact, you know, instead of playing around with the rubber one right now, I'll go and put the hard plastic one. Because it's a little lesser, it's not a lot, it's not deeper. Because when you fill in your brake fluid, you can see here, this is about a good, I say about a centimeter downward. And you're gonna be filling your brake fluid as much as you can. So this one's a little shorter. Not a lot, not a lot shorter, maybe just a little slightly shorter. And you can just put the cap on it right now, like this, and then you can do your brake. Some people even put a screw back on or even hold it with the heavier um they add it the well. I'm not sure this will give you a lot of dead weight, but it should be able to give you some weight. But yeah, you can just put something like that on there. That'll keep the um, little springs from shooting upward. Okay, here we go. I think that was just a one-time deal, but we're going to have to put some more brake fluid shortly. But that was just a lot of air trying to make its way back up. There we go. You can see how it's actually the level when I'm pushing it. See the little mechanism there? Let's see here. See that how there's something that's pushing it from left to right? What it is is there's a little um, pump on your brake lever. You can't see it. See that right there? When I push it in like this, squeezing it, it pushes into it. And there's a little rubber boot. It now it never leaks from this end normally. But um, that's the mechanism right there, see? So what it is, is these little springs of air is coming back out of this end, which is good. We want the air to come back out any end we can. If we can't get it from that end, let it come out uh, from the master cylinder end, which is great. Okay, yeah, it's getting low, so I'm going to go and start tapping it right now. I'm going to leave the cap. Okay.